Falcons knocking off the Bucks 24-21 last night in a game they really needed to win. Matt Ryan held to just 212 yards, one touchdown, but Devontae Freeman, boy, he picked up the slack. 194 total yards and a touchdown. Most importantly, Atlanta proves to 9-5, and five, clinging to a one-game lead over the Lions, Seahawks, and Cowboys for the sixth seed in the NFC. But it was a good mood all around at the post-game ice cream social. We're you know, right where we need to be uh, at this point of the season. Uh, two games to go in the regular season. And, um, you know, we got to find a way to, to get back to work this week, try and improve and, and make sure that we play uh, the best we're capable of playing next Sunday to try and get a win. And, and that's really all our focus needs to be about. If we're worrying about anything else, um, you know, you're, you're, not, you're not as locked in as you need to be. So this potential NFC six seed has become this very coveted spot right now. You got your Falcons, your Lions, your Seahawks, and your Cowboys. Which of those is the most dangerous, in your opinion, CC? <sighs> uh, Atlanta scares me, uh, even though they're playing better football than they played earlier in the season. It's between them and the Cowboys. The Cowboys' ability to run the football probably scares a, a lot of teams. Their defense, how good they're going to be. It, I would probably say the Cowboys. The Cowboys, I would probably say out of Atlanta, who can go further? Atlanta inconsistent last night, as we saw with Matty Ice. The inability to be in the passing game, move the chains. Devontae Freeman saved their season. Yeah. Against Tampa Bay, they got everything on the line, and they can't throw the ball. And at some point, we have to believe what we see. That was last year's team. He was last year's MVP. They were last year's leading scoring team. and uh, I mean, this team, sometimes they don't even look like the same team. So I would say Dallas, and because of their ability to run the ball consistently and how in the playoffs it eats up the clock, that's probably the team I would be have more fear in facing uh, than the Falcons. I want to, before I enter, I want to make something real clear to the audience. This is not who's going to be the sixth seed. It's of these four teams, if they got in, who'd be the most dangerous? Because I yeah. don't think anyone... I normally give the American public just a little bit of credit. Okay. Like when they have that little thing at the bottom, potentially what six seed would be the most <laughs> dangerous? I believe that most of them can read. Okay, that's fair. Oh, okay. But I want to make sure, because I don't think you believe Dallas is going to end up the six seed, nor do I. No, I'm just but trying if they... to answer the question. Exactly right. But if they do, Atlanta's probably going to be the six seed. Atlanta's got the nine wins. They're the most likely to be there. They also so, have the hardest schedule. Right. That's absolutely true. They have to. They have Carolina and New Orleans the last two weeks. But they have the tiebreakers. They're the most likely to be there. But CeCe's absolutely right that of all the teams to get there, the Cowboys are the only one that I think could actually win a playoff game. Like, the Seahawks are ravaged by injuries. Right. Detroit's a team that I, simp I think for a couple years has been basically the same team. Seven, eight, nine win team that that's about their basement and their ceiling and they're not a real threat come the postseason. And the point about Atlanta it, that's so important is you do, especially when we're headed into week 16, you have to disassociate yourself from last season. I have a, that is very difficult to do early in a year. Early in a season, it is very difficult, to, unless there is major overhaul, quarterback change, coaching change. When you see a team last year, and it's the first few weeks, you're like, wait, why aren't they the same team? But now we are closer to the end of this season than we are to the end of last season. We have seen a, almost a full season's worth of Atlanta. And what we know, particularly over the last three games, is that pass defense is terrible, and the offense is no longer elite. Like, the offense is a good offense, as opposed to last year, they were right there with the all-time greatest offenses. So yep. why is it the Cowboys? To me, it's what CeCe mentioned in the running game and the fact that we have seen the Cowboys, and this is the, this is the biggest if for them, more so than any other team in the league, win healthy, win fully operational, they're a really, really good football team. And I know Tyron Smith just tweaked his ankle, but Sean Lee's healthy, Zeke's coming back. If they were to make the playoffs, they would theoretically be fully operational, and that's a dangerous football team. Matt Ryan said in his post-game press conference, he fully acknowledges this team's offense is not where it was last year, nor is it where it needs to be. Although, hey, Matt, we're inching very close to the postseason. Maybe you need to get everybody on the same page. But we put so much weight on the quarterback. If you look at the four quarterbacks of these four teams, you know, Matt Ryan, Matt Stafford, uh, Russell Wilson, and then Dak Prescott, 
Do any of these quarterbacks stick out? Could you could you play some emphasis on the quarterback as, as that being the guy that takes this team through? Well, obviously, if I think Dallas is the team you don't want to play, I'm not putting it on the quarterback. If I was putting it on the quarterback, I would still have more faith in Matt Ryan because Matt Ryan is the best quarterback of the group. But Steve Sarkeesian, offensive coordinator, they don't have the same chemistry. They don't have the same flow. Their offensive line is not that good. Last night, they were able to run the football, and when you can run the football like that, you should be able to throw the ball effectively, and that's what they did last year. So it can't be based on the quarterback. This is a quarterback-driven league, but these are the teams at the bottom of the NFC. You're talking about carrying a team. No, none of these quarterbacks are good enough to do that. And what what's interesting is the team that I think of the four that we all have the least faith in is Seattle. That's the team that might have the best quarterback. Like I don't know. Oh, Russell. Detroit. Oh, I got more faith in Seattle than Detroit. The that's you know, I even with I, where I'm at with Detroit after seeing what happened with Seattle last week to the Rams in their biggest game of the year, that shook me, that shook my faith entirely as far as their ability to do any type of, it, it, string together any type of consistency. But I, typically we do look at coach and quarterback, right? But as, as CeCe mentioned, we're talking about teams fighting for this last spot. They're all flawed teams. They're all teams with a big hole here or a big hole there. You're, to me, the, the question is, which team at their best can be the best of the group? Which team at their – if they play a great game, which team could go on the road and win a playoff game and against team? Dallas? Like, because Dallas at their best is one of the better teams in the league. The problem is, as soon as – they're, I mean, they're this amazing meal that if you remove one ingredient, all of a sudden it tastes terrible. Like, that's, that's right. not the case with the good teams in football. That is the case with Dallas. Dallas might be getting healthy and getting right at the exact right time if they were to get it. This is such a tough conference this year that if this was the AFC, oh easily God. more than one of these teams, two or three of them, could very much be in the postseason. Definitely. All right, coming up, which surprising quarterback has his team in line for the deep, deep, deep play?